Welcome to Ashley Marie. Today I'm going to teach you about four different kinds of pie crusts. Let's get started. First up, a traditional American pie crust. So we have our flour. This is just all purpose flour. And then we have a little bit of sugar and a little bit of salt. Whisk those together. Now for the fat, you can go with all butter, all shortening, or a half and half. Personally, I prefer the half and half. I feel like it gives the best results, uh, but go with whatever you like. So for the butter, it's cold, and I already have it cut up into pieces. Oops, so I'm just gonna break it up over my flour and sugar and salt mixture. Kind of just break those up and get them covered. All right, now I have my shortening. And again, we want this in pieces. So I'm just pulling out little chunks at a time and then covering them with flour. Now we're gonna take this, this is a pastry cutter. You can use knives if that's all you have and just cut against each other. But a pastry cutter is a really great way to go. And you just squish it in, cutting it. And that's gonna cut all of your chunks of fat. We want those chunks that we're cutting to get covered in flour. That's the whole point of this, is to kind of intersperse the flour and the fat. All right, now you can see that's worked in together really well. The, even the floury side of it is also incorporated into the butter and a little bit thicker. We still have these pea-sized chunks, but the overall, the texture is just really great and crumbly. So now we're gonna add the water. So I put a bunch of water with ice, because this needs to be cold. We want ice water, and I'm gonna measure out the water that we need without getting any ice chunks in there. And I'm just gonna drizzle it over the top without getting it all in one place. I know some people who use a mixer for their pie crust. In fact, I've used my mixer for a pie crust before uh, when I'm in a hurry. It can totally be done, but it, you have to watch it really carefully because a mixer is going so fast that it's actually going to bring the dough together so quickly and kind of turn it into a more of a pasty texture than we're looking for. It's gonna make it too even, too smooth. And pie crust, because we want this to be flaky, we want little pockets of, of the butter and the shortening that are gonna kind of melt when it's cooking. And so we want it to be kind of a broken up thing. As you can see, it's coming together really nicely. And I don't wanna call this kneading, because again, we don't want to mix it until it's smooth but we just want all the crumbs to come together and stay together. It should be kind of a rough dough when it's together. So this is actually two pie crusts. I'm gonna break it in half. All right, so I've brought this together. As you can see, it's not perfectly smooth. See these different colors like that and that? These are little ribbons of butter and shortening. They're gonna melt and make the pie really flaky. So this is exactly what we want it to do. We're gonna wrap it in plastic and stick it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. Now we're gonna make a pâte à briser. Now a pâte à briser is actually very similar to the American flaky pie crust, but instead of working it in and leaving all those chunks, we actually use, make it in a food processor and it's gonna be smooth, but a lot of the same ingredients. So flour. Now this one is great for savory dishes, quiches, stuff like that. This one doesn't have any sugar in it at all. Salt, some broken up shortening. There we go. And then broken up uh, cold butter. Now, kind of like before, it looks more like a meal, a coarse meal texture than flour. So now we're gonna turn it on and add some vinegar and then some cold water. Once it pulls together, you're done. I'm gonna pat this out into two discs, just like before, you know, flatten them out, wrap them in plastic, and refrigerate them for 30 minutes. The next one up is a pate sucre. Now, sucre is sweet sugar. And so this is a dessert crust. This is a much sweeter crust. Um, so again, starts with a lot of the same basics. Flour, and this time a lot more sugar. And I'm not putting any salt in this one, so. Down. And again, just a touch of shortening. This just kind of helps hold the whole thing together, but uh, you can leave the shortening out and go with all butter if you prefer. 
um, and I just, it's not a lot of shortening and it creates a great effect. So this one has a lot more butter, a lot more sugar, a lot more butter. <laughs> Let's face it, it's gonna be delicious. And this is just creating a coarser meal with like hmm, pea-sized chunks in it. And now we're gonna add our liquid. Now, instead of being cold water or vinegar like the other crust, this one is actually cream. Mmm, okay. As you can see, this one is much coarser, but when pressed, it does come together. All right, so now we've created two discs, just like before. We're gonna wrap these in plastic wrap and stick them in the fridge. And the final crust is a pâte de sable. Now this means sandy. So this is a more uh, sandy texture, kind of like almost a shortbread cookie. So this is more cookie-like than some of the other pies, but it's still a pie crust. All right, so this one starts with actually softened butter. It's the only pie crust recipe that I use softened butter with. And now we're gonna add the sugar. Now this is uh, powdered sugar or confectioner sugar. Rather than granular, it'll uh, work its way into the crust uh, much easier. An egg yolk and a little bit of salt. I'm gonna use my pastry whisks. You can use regular whisks if that's all that you have, but the pastry whisk is gonna be just a little bit smoother. And then of course, my bowl scrapers. All right, we're gonna mix this until it's smooth. We're gonna add the flour just a little bit at a time. Now this one, also similar to the pâte de sucre, has more of a, a crumbly texture to it, even after it's mixed. So we're just gonna separate these two into halves, and then we're gonna create discs and wrap them in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. We're done with all four doughs. They've sat in the fridge for 30 minutes. They are ready to roll out. So the American is actually a really easy one to roll out. In fact, it's best to roll it out. But these other three can be rolled or patted. It's completely up to you. The American, you don't want to necessarily pat into the pan because you'll ruin uh, or you'll over mix those great flaky layers that we were going for. So this one rolls out once. Uh, cut it, fit it, you know, but not again. Where the rest of these, you can actually use the leftover dough really easily. So this is our American flaky. This is our brise, so not sweet. This is the sucre, so the sweet one. And then this is the sablé, so the sandy, more cookie-like texture. Since we're making such small tarts, I just cut a little piece out of the crust. And I'm going, to, I've covered both sides with flour. And I have this great uh, rolling out pie bag that I have had since I was married. It's amazing, I love it. I couldn't work without it. It keeps your dough from sticking to the countertop. It makes it easy to move your dough around. I seriously love it. Now it's time to cover them with plastic wrap and chill for another 30 minutes in the fridge to help them hold their shape. But you have two options when it comes to baking your pie crust. You can either blind bake them, which is to bake them empty, and then fill them with a filling that doesn't have to be baked because it's already cooked. Uh, or of course you can fill it with something that does need to be cooked and then bake the pie crust and the pie at the same time together. So for today's examples, I'm gonna blind bake these so we can compare the four and look at them all together. Now we're gonna take this foil shiny side down because that will cook better. And there's two reasons we're using the foil. One, it's gonna actually protect this outside edge so that it doesn't overcook before the inside cooks. And two, we're gonna weigh down our pie. You can use pie weights, you can use pinto beans, you can use rice. Uh, I use pinto beans because I have a ton of them and they're super cheap. So you want to take this foil and press it down into all the crevices. And by using foil before we put the pinto beans in, we'll be able to pull the pinto beans out partway through baking uh, without disrupting the crust in any way. We can just pull the foil and the beans out together. All right, so press that into all the crevices and kind of stretch it out a little bit. And that's gonna protect our edge. And then we can fill it with beans. Now the beans is gonna help because the pie crusts don't have a filling that weighs them down, if we just cooked these the way they were, these centers would puff up a lot. So the beans are actually gonna help weigh down that crust so that it doesn't just balloon up and it stays right in the position that we want it. 
It's time to put these in the oven now. I'm gonna bake them at 400 degrees for about five minutes, and then I'm gonna reduce the heat to 350. I like cooking low and slow, but that initial heat blast is gonna kinda of hold it in place really well. So then 350 for about 15 minutes, and then we'll pull out the weights and see. Look at the, take a look at the crust. They might need another five to 10 minutes after that. And the pie crusts are done. As you can see, there's quite a difference between some of these. So the American and the Brise are actually the most similar crusts. And as you can see, they cooked really similar too. There was also some shrinkage and they had to cook a little bit longer where the Sucre and the Sable actually didn't shrink at all. And they cooked much, much, much quicker. If anything, I should have taken out the weights much sooner, especially since you don't really have to worry about the shrinking. It's more about not browning the edge too quickly. Uh, but I didn't get that nice golden color on the inside the way I like. So again, the Sucre and the Sable are great for baking first and then filling with sweet desserts. The brise is for savory food and it's definitely perfect for things that you wanna cook in the crust with the crust cooking as well, like uh, quiches and pot pies and other things like that because it's not sweet, it's a great crust, it's really delicate and beautiful and tastes amazing. Uh, and by having food in it when you bake, it's not gonna shrink quite as bad, so it's not as good for blind baking as the sucre and the sable are. Now the American flaky can be sweet or savory. Um, and again, because of the shrinkage issue, I would definitely use the American flaky for anything I'm gonna bake in the crust, like, uh, uh, like a cookie or a fudge pie or anything like that where you're baking the crust and the filling at the same time. So that's what I use all of these different ones for. So let's break them and see what we think, right? All right, so. It flakes beautifully, as you can see with the American flaky, you're getting all of those different flaky layers where the butter and the shortening melted. It's got a wonderful crust, right? The brise. It was also, it's also very similar to the flaky, but it's a little bit more mixed. And so it's a little bit denser, a little bit more compact, but still a great crust. All right, the sucre is so soft. In fact, some people think it's more of a cakey pie crust, but I don't want to, I don't like using that word because it's not anything like cake. It's just a little bit softer. So you don't get any of those pockets because there's nothing melted in there because it's nice and smooth. And then the sable, which is uh, more like a shortbread cookie. It's more, I don't want to say gritty, but they, sable means sandy. So it's a little bit more sandy. All right, so let's try them all. Mm. All right, the sable is definitely very much like a sugar shortbread cookie. Um, it's sweet, but not too sweet. Um, it's a great way to go when you want a nice, uh, dense, strong crust. All right, the sucre, mm. much softer. It just melts in your mouth. And again, it's a little less sweet than the first one. All right, the brise, which is not sweet at all, no sugar. Mm. <laughs> Very flaky, it falls apart. Mm. Soft, flaky, buttery, it's everything a crust should be. And finally, the American. It's a little bit crunchier than the brise. Mm but let's face it, I love pie crust and I would eat any of these any day. It's really just a matter of what you're looking for. And that is everything. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial on the explanation on all of these different pie crusts. As always, in the description, I have links to the printable recipes with all of the measurements for every recipe on the site. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything. It's the holidays. I have a lot of fun stuff coming up. Leave me a comment if you have a video suggestion, a recipe you want to see. And if you make anything, let me know how it goes. Tag me in social media if you take a picture. I'd love to see when you guys try things. Thanks for watching.